Can I have your attention? We're going to leave the narthex doors open, Carol. Sorry. Part of our airflow for safety. Thank you for your flexibility as we respond to new governor's orders, to changes in temperature and humidity, and to all the things that are out of our control. We are still the church together. We're in this together. And thank heavens we can forgive each other for all the little things that are so challenging for us. And it is so good to be able to see each other, to be in each other's presence, even though there's so much awkwardness in it. I feel the awkwardness, and uh, day to day there's things about it that are so challenging. But uh, we are still the church together. So uh, these blue papers are the survey about when we can have the congregational meeting. We only need your household to fill out one, so if you did that last week or online, one is sufficient. Today's the last day to do that. Um, so it doesn't mean that you can't come to the congregational meeting if you haven't expressed your opinion, only that we'll take your opinion into account only through today. So uh, it goes in the offering basket uh, with your offering and any other comments you want to <laughs> leave for us in the offering basket today. Uh, and we did work out with Worship and Music today how we're going to begin to offer communion, um, we think, on the day of the congregational meeting. We have to keep our services short, so uh, we're going to start the first time by offering a communion in one kind with bread only the first time, so we can figure out how to do it, and it'll be brought to you where you're sitting. Um, probably outside because we're committed to being outside as much as we can. But we'll explain that through grace notes and in the um, other ways that we can. And we ask you to pass that along because not everybody's on email. But we thought we wanted that sign of our unity together on the day we have the congregational meeting. And we won't be able to do it as often right now. But we know that you understand that we're, we're working one step at a time. I um, understand that, Carol, you have some joyous announcement to share with us. So please, where you are, shout as long as you Congratulations. We're delighted with you at the engagement of Michael. Great. Are there other announcements to share, joyous or otherwise? And her name is Her name is Molly. Okay, she's uh, even visited Grace. Yes, Jean. Okay, anyone who wants to uh, surprise Emily with birthday greetings, her, her birthday is Friday. Thank you for sharing that. Pastor Lee, so good to have you with us today. Other announcements? after this service for yeah. two seconds. Two seconds, the choir with Kevin. Great. Let us now turn into worship with the prelude from Kevin.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Psalm 86, verses 11 through 15. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. I will thank you, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forevermore. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the pit of death. The arrogant rise up against me, O God. And a band of violent people seeks my life. They have not set you before their eyes. But you, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. The second reading is from Romans chapter 8, verses 14 to 25. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. But for you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us, for the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope, that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. When I told the children when we were worshiping online, that the first time we came back, we would have a children's message and they would all bring their comfort animals or comfort blankets. It was hard to imagine then, I believe in early April, what the coming back would be. I sort of imagined it would be more complete and different than this. And hard to imagine then how prolonged this time would be and how long that we would have to be separated by things like masks and distance and not everybody coming at once. So there's a struggle in that. And the children can't come forward and you can't just bring your things and share them. But nevertheless, I've always known that the children's messages aren't just for the ones that are here, uh, that others have also appreciated them. So I bring Pooch Patrol as a sign that uh, all of us have something that has given us comfort, and we've, we're having our prayers of gratitude today in part as a sign of that. 
And at some point, I'm hoping that more children will be here and we don't have to glare the spotlight on just the two that are here in our midst today and that there'll be some way of recognizing what has carried them through. But in the meantime, today, I wanted in July to be having some children's message as the sign of the presence of children in our midst. And today um, is the day that I wanted to do that around this message in Romans. When we cry, Abba, Father. That phrase in Romans is one of the places, the language that Jesus leads through in the New Testament. Jesus spoke Aramaic. We don't often think about what language uh, the Bible was written in because it comes to us in English, in different English translations. And most of the Bible was written down either in Hebrew in the Old Testament or Greek in the New Testament. But Jesus himself spoke, himself spoke Aramaic, which is a language like Hebrew. And I like to think of um, the language of prayer, the prayer that we're most comfortable in. And I'd like you to think for a moment about the prayer of your heart, the prayer that comes to your lips when you're most in distress. We've been working on prayer in confirmation class. And I think of that as a way of forming our young people in prayer. And they're just learning how to pray. Many people pray using the Lord's Prayer. And that starts out saying, Our Father. And for many people, calling on God as Father is a very comfortable way to pray. And the second word there is Abba, Father. But the word Abba is how Jesus calls on God right there, Abba. And in Aramaic, that really is like calling on God as Daddy, not Father. Daddy. And the difference between Daddy and Father is like a very intimate like the first word that a baby says, da-da. Like that closest person that you could be close to. So I want you to hold together both the prayer, the way that you reach out to God, and the person in the world that you feel closest to. And see that what Paul is saying to us here is that we can reach out to God in the way that we reach to the person we are closest to on earth. Abba, Father. In that relationship of trust. And I hope that you have someone like that in your life that you can extend in that image and know that that's what God is like. Abba, Father. And that, in that way, we know that we are children also of God and so can trust God. We're waiting for the fuller return. And in that way, we're waiting also for the fuller sense of what God reveals.
Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew in the 13th chapter. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, then do you want us to go and gather the wheat along with them? Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man, and the field is the world. And the good seed are the children of the kingdom, and the weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Let the weeds and the wheat grow together until the harvest. My family and I live in a section of Philadelphia that sits near the edge of some decay. There are signs of reinvestment, but some properties, some blocks are still overrun with weeds, with properties needing work. It was worse a few years ago and a neighborhood organization brought a crowd out on a Saturday to gather trash and to cut down overgrown weeds. Out back behind our garage, the corner property was completely overgrown. There's a little street out where our garage fronts at the back of our property. On that side of the street, there are only garages. On the other side of the street, the houses come right up to the street with pavement and no yards. At that time on the garage side, I was the only gardener. My yard inside is shady, so that section out by the garage is one of our only sunny spots. It's where I have raspberries and lilacs. It was early that Saturday before we were outside. The volunteers picked up the stray trash and food containers that have a way of filling up that street. Then they brought in a team with yard equipment. From one end of the block to the other, they cut down all the vegetation, thick, overgrown, weedy trees and lots of weeds. Unfortunately, the team wasn't very discriminating. My raspberry patch wasn't fruiting then. It was October. The lilacs weren't in flower. They raised my whole garden. Now, any gardener, indeed, Anyone doing much looking at all that day would have seen that my part of the street along with a stone wall was a garden. But to the team with the yard equipment in their hands, it all looked the same. Shall we go and gather the weeds out of the field? The slaves asked the master. No, he answered, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them lest you mistake raspberries for overgrowth or wheat for weeds. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. Radio storyteller Garrison Keillor, now retired, admitted on air that he had secret thoughts about the Bible when he was a kid. 
He wished he could skip the New Testament and leap back to the Old Testament. He was fond of the smiting stories, where God told the Israelites to smite their enemies and then help them to do it. But that is not Jesus. Love your enemies, he teaches us. Pray for those who persecute you. Judgment is mine, says the Lord. Let the weeds and the wheat grow together until the harvest, then the angels of God will take care of it. Does this story tell us not to weed our gardens? Of course not. And it's also not a diatribe against block cleanups either. Weeds and wheat are metaphors, picture stories about good and evil, which one of us hasn't wondered why evil looks so strong, why people do horrible things and seem to get away with so much. I surely feel that. But again and again in the Gospels, when God's judgment is revealed, what is revealed is surprising to people who have presumed that they were on the right side. Yet how hard it is for us to learn to step back from our presumptions about who is evil, from our presumptions that we are always on the right side. I wonder if Jesus tells this story to get us to look at ourselves rather than someone else. No, let them grow together for now. Let it be, for now good and evil stand side by side. Take care of what is appropriately yours. Be responsible about yourself before God, for that is where you stand, and that will be a strong witness and an invitation to others. We're in a season of hearing Jesus' parables. This story is like last week's about the sower. The original story is in the first paragraph. It focuses on the generosity of God. Jesus' disciples, the field hands or slaves in the story, want to rout out the evil weeds but Jesus forbids it. If you pull out now what you think are the weeds, you'll be pulling out only what you think are the weeds. It won't be absolutely clear until the end when the plants are full grown. Then there's a break in our text. If you're reading in your Bibles, you'd find other stories in between. Then comes the interpretation of the parable which moves its meaning in another direction. Last week, it was about the kinds of soil as a comparison to the life of faith. This week, it matches people along the righteous to evil continuum, using the parts of the story, field, seeds, enemy, reaper, and so on, to create the drama that moves the story, but also gets us to look at ourselves and see where we are. I wanted you to hear both parts of the story so you could see the pattern of the parable, the way they develop, so you could be learning about the parables. But this morning I'm focusing just on the first part. It's just a word picture. We can't be slavish to it. But any gardener knows a thistle doesn't turn into a rose. It's either a thistle or a rose from the beginning. But just to follow that word picture for one minute more, the generosity of God grants to each of the plants all the time they need to become completely what they are, which may not be apparent until the end. Several things struck me as I worked with your reflections from last week about life in pandemic time. First, there were so many joys. For every five words of struggle and difficulty, which we know there have been, there were four words of joy, even in this most difficult time. And second, of course, not everything about time in isolation was good. It was also boring, lonely, and a struggle. We get to that part next week. But many of us have found ways to receive this time as a gift. 
And that's what struck me, that the gift of time was such a big gift. Time that the ordinary pace of our lives does not give us. Time that the pace of our lives that we choose for ourselves does not give us. It's a thread running through many of the parables of Jesus. But one of God's greatest gifts to us is the gift of time. Time for the amendment of our lives. Time to cherish and enjoy this moment. Time for this gift of life. You have noticed that. And we pause to give the author and giver of life thanks. I wondered if it would be hard to t be in touch with your joy, so I asked about that second. But we bring those joys to prayer first today to stay in touch with our gratitude. May it be the foundation of our practice of faith that whatever is hard that lays in front of us may have this solid foundation under our feet. It's not coincidental that this is called a practice of Christian faith, living in gratitude. It's not something we learn in a minute. We need to practice it over and over, over the course of our lives. Let the weeds and the wheat grow together until the harvest, giving us time. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Pastor, do you want me to read that first part? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll... Our prayers this morning are a gathering of the people of graces, joys during pandemic time. We pause to thank God for sustaining us, for granting us gifts of connection, love, hope, strength, and a sense of purpose 
in spite of the many difficulties and struggles of this time. Next week we'll be praying for healing for the difficulties raised up in last week's gathering exercise. When I say, bless we the Lord, you respond with thanks be to God. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We thank you, O God, for the gift of unhurried time, your gift of time for us, O God, to be reconnected and renewed within our households, even within the constraints of pandemic life. Time to look back over our years together and remember our blessings. Time for reflection. Time for going deeper into neglected projects. Time for puzzles. Time to discover new ways to use our isolation time. Time to explore multiple online church offerings to receive their messages. We praise you for unexpected free time, for time to relax, for the time we can share with our young adults and grown children when we can visit for time to explore and work on new ventures, or work details around the house, or learn new things, and for time to sit on our porches, or by the fire pit, or on the deck. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Heavenly Father, you remind us in this season of the special gift of our families. We bless you for this unexpected enrichment with them, for family bike rides, in the joy of a new grandchild, for a son's recent engagement, for the good health of loved ones, for the pleasure of working on projects together with family members. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. Eternal God, We thank you for the joys of our homes and yards, for baby rabbits, baby birds, birds singing, for cardinals, for time at home to watch this spring unfold in our gardens, for the ability to work from home without a commute, without interruptions, for more family dinners, more baking and cooking, and for our pets. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. O God of heaven and earth, we see your hand also in the deeper movement and righteous of this time, rightness of this time, or some part of it. Our children's choices of life partners during this time of isolation, a child's growth in a new or unexpected way, the sense that our nation may finally confront racial injustice. Seeing community come together to protect each other or to help with donations. For your guidance and protection in this time of vulnerability and change, and for these movements toward growth and wholeness, bless we the Lord. Faithful God, we praise you for the wonder of our connection as church that transmits even over the internet, worship on YouTube, and when we are isolated from each other, even by seeing pictures of each other online and the ability to study your word online with friends far away. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. We thank you for good neighbors for the web of connections with friends, enhanced by phone and internet. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gracious God, we thank you for the beginning signs of opening up, for being able to get away from Pennsylvania for a break, for time away with a loved one at the beach, for getting out to see a loved one, 
and for grace being able to return to worship in person. For these beginnings and for the ways they sustain us in hope for the future, bless we the Lord. God of life, those who have died in you shine like the sun in your endless kingdom. We remember with thanksgiving the saints of all times and places, naming before you those dear to us. Mama Jean Getter, John Green, Jess Moran's uncle, Victor Dominguez, Jesus Tula's uncle, lost to COVID-19, and Beto Domingos, Jesus Tula's cousin. Gather us with them on the day of salvation. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Please rise. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to find someone to see with your visual, with your eyes, and to greet them with the peace of Christ so you can do that in some meaningful way. death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Go in peace, Christ is with you.